According to my calculations, the placement's fine. It's time to turn down the gravity and actually grab the attention of my third eye. Shock. I'm sick of all these city slickers spitting mark decisions that are gonna cost. And my thoughts have drawn me into a descriptive grid of the written black. The whole idea behind Drew Bader, um, I guess, on my way to work and from work, I would always see graffiti like on the block and on people's houses. Um, I was living not in the best side of town, like Castro, California, you know, I believe it was like Avenue I and 7th Street East. And it's just weird, like kids walk down these alleyways and they see this, like kind of, you can only imagine what they think. So it's like, man, what can I do to like get people something bigger to dream about or something better with their lives to reflect on? So I started doing the street art thing with Dream Bigger and it was like 2012, I believe, uh, maybe around February where it kind of was like, you know what, I want to do this and I want to push it. I want people to think like positive, like there's like so much negative like shit in the world. Like why do we need to sit here and feed off of it? Like we need to do better as a nation and better as a people and start doing more positive things. Like everybody has a role to play in life and I believe like if you don't get back, then what are you doing in life? So I started doing more and more of it in the streets. Um, I, I got a couple of hits on it. Like people were really gravitating towards those words. So like I started getting shirts done, uh, hats, and then stickers. Like, and people really loved it. Like, cause it was like when somebody saw a sticker in the street or something, it wasn't like they thought about like the negative shit that happened in the day. It was like they thought about that Jim Baker sticker and they're like excited cause they knew the strength behind it and know the power behind it. And like we actually lived those words, so it was like it was that happy moment for them. So that's important to me with the whole Dream Bigger movement. Um, it just I, it was an idea that I had, and I started doing it, and it just took off. Like people really gravitated towards it because it was something positive, and maybe they weren't used to seeing something positive, and just those two words just made them uh, think and and uh, want to do better in the world and. It was all because of just something that I created. Um, even just people saying they saw my stickers makes my day because like I know it changed their day or made them happy when they saw my stickers. So it, it's cool. Like I, I really appreciate everything that people have uh, done for me and support the movement because it's crazy. Like I created it and people are like following it, and, and it's awesome feeling just to have people like really gravitate towards it. So. A lot of my art, um, I do abstract and I do, you know, stencils and, you know, a lot of other things. But as far as the stencils, I like to use a lot of aviation stuff. Um, I know people, a lot of people have noticed, but where it comes from is my mom was in the military for 20 plus years um, in the Air Force. So it was pretty much a part of my life, daily life, seeing helicopters or airplanes that normal people don't even really get the chance to see. And I seen this at a young age and you just kind of grew up with it. And it's just something that is awesome to me. Like uh, I use the Chuck Yeager image a lot in uh, some of my artwork because he was the first man to break the sound barrier. And I mean, at that time, like, man, that's kind of a big deal if you really sit down and think about it because they didn't have the technology that we had. So basically it was kind of a suicide mission in a sense, but I, I kind of looked up to him. I met him uh, a few times. I actually have his autograph. Um, and he, he's a great guy and I really respect him for what he did not only for the aviation community but just for us as a whole um, and for as far as the abstract stuff um, so I do a lot of abstract that's kind of like what I hold dear to my heart because it's my own expression it's my colors it's my emotions on it not just how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis but just uh, my whole creative juice that I have inside of my head um, I, I like to use like the most random stuff to where people would not normally use. Um, one thing I like to do is go in, because uh, I live in the desert, you know, Roseland, California, own it down, woo. But what I do is um, I go in the desert and a lot of people like to dump, which is, you know, horrible thing as it is. You gotta uh, take care of our environment, but a lot of people dump it in the desert and I find a lot of this old stuff. Um, and I think it's awesome because it, uh, what it is, is something that no longer has meaning to somebody, has meaning to me now and I'm recirculating it back in the world to where it has me again. So it's kind of like, it's dope. And it's just stuff like that that's quirky and weird that like just gets my juices flowing because it's different, you know? Like, it's, it's fun. Like, art is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be like your little getaway. It shouldn't be about money. It shouldn't be about like work. It should just be about 
you stepping to the canvas and you're in another world from like the world that you're in, whether you're having a bad day or a good day, um, you can express yourself in so many ways. To me, there's no good art. There's no bad art. Like art is art. Art comes within yourself. Um, it's it's part of you. So I mean, for somebody to judge art like, oh, this is good or bad is not fair, like in my eyes. But I mean, everybody has their art critics or their art reviews or whatever. But I mean, you know, I'm not trying to knock on anybody, but I think art just is, it, it's art. Like, there's no good or bad. So, um, I'm, I'm a weirdo. There's no easy way to say it. I mean, most artists are weird. I mean, it's just, you know, it's part of the nature, part of the energy. But um, I kind of have a miniature bucket list, um, and this happens to be number 32 on my list. Um, I've always had this dream of just going out in the middle of the desert and just setting different obstacles up filled with paint and shooting them with guns. And then you have your canvas just kind of like in the middle and then everything set up on the outside and then you shoot it. And I just always wanted to do that. And I have the opportunity to do it. Uh, and we actually get to catch a lot of it on uh, film and photography. So it's kind of like, it's awesome because it's kind of conquering my dream. It's almost like dreaming bigger for me because I've had this in my heart for so long. And you know, like if you're an artist, like you, you have something in your mind so long, you want to do it and when you do it, like, so this morning I got the materials to stretch the canvas. So I stretched the canvas uh, eight feet by four feet, triple primed it and everything. So I got everything ready to go, my paint. So I'm like really excited to do it because it's a kind of an opportunity of a lifetime in my eyes. For some people, it may be small, but to me, it's it, it's big. Like most people would be like, "Oh, you're going to the middle of this, you paint. What fun is that?" But it's more than that to me. Um, it's more than that. Peace.